Okay, we should be on now. Well, as we already did, welcome everybody and thank y'all for, for being here. Um, I'm going to sit down so I can read my notes and I'm sorry if that's offensive. Hopefully it helps you guys see that better anyway. Um, tonight we're going to be talking about paragraphs in Drupal 8 and um, mostly I'm going to be pre presenting some examples of paragraph types and then examples of how to theme them. Um, please interrupt me at any time because I've got slides and notes so I'll be able to find where I was and um, ask some questions and I'll let you know if we're about to get to it or if we need to address it now. Um, or you can hold them to the end and we can have a discussion at the end. I hope we do. Um, we can also look at, I've got a demo site that uh, I've got all my screenshots from in my presentation and we can look at editing some paragraphs or doing some dragging and dropping or whatever you might think you want to look at at the end and then all the code um, from this page uh, so it will be there as well. Um, here's some links to the repository uh, for the site I made for the presentation. Um, if you're a composer folk and you have a computer out and you want to do it, you can compose her in style. Or if you do that when you get home, um, that'll bring in those two themes as well. Um, and in that first theme is the slide deck and a PDF file. So also, all you have to remember is this part, and I'll put this on the, the Meetup page, um, uh, a link to the uh, main repository. You can get the PDFs in there, too. So you can just get that and look at these. And we'll have all the links and everything there, too, because we'll have a lot more links towards the end. Um, that's, yeah, I didn't read that in order, but that's what I meant to say. Um, OK, so we're going to be looking at these four modules primarily. And I could see that when I wrote that. So the paragraphs module. Um, is obviously what we're talking about. We're going to be looking at the components uh, or component libraries module, um, which is doesn't have a user interface. It's what we're going to be using for our theming fun. Uh, field group, which is a user interface module for um, applying uh, different elements to groups of fields and entity types. And then we're going to talk a little bit about entity reference revisions, which is a dependency of paragraphs and kind of does what it says there on the, on the 10. It's about entity reference revisions. Um, briefly, because there's a lot of tutorials and articles about getting started with paragraphs, we're gonna, I'm going to explain those a little bit. And then um, we're going to do these other things. I'm going to tell you why you should care. We're going to do some examples and the styling and then Mix it with the style we'll be talking about components. And components is one of those words that means a lot of different things. And it'll just mean what I mean when we're talking about it now. If you'd not hold me too closely to the semantic definition, that would be really kind of you. Um, basically, paragraphs are one of the ways that you can set the layout or the appearance of content as it's being created. Um, you know, WYSIWYG's one way. Uh, there's lots of ways, really. Um, so they're a way to group content entities through field definitions. Um, I wrote that sentence, and yeah, I'll get back to that. So somewhere between, it's, it's really somewhere between removing the WYSIWYG entirely from the content creators, which is what we'd all kind of like to do, and then letting them have free reign to do everything is, well, here are these structured pieces, and we'll let you put these wherever you want to put them. And um, hopefully it's a happy medium between you know, tyranny and, and chaos. Um, so paragraphs can ease the content creation management process. You can drag and drop vertical placement of different content chunks. Um, you can have descriptive names in the, in the admin form describe what content will look like whenever it's getting rendered. Um, previewing is possible without using um, edit in place JavaScript, which is new in Drupal 8, and it's a work in progress. And it's really cool, but sometimes maybe we don't. We're not ready for that. Um, Paragraphs, I, I think that they're a little bit easier um, to use than, say, inline entity form, easier to control and style and make look pretty. Um, as a note, paragraphs are not going to be appropriate to represent content. They'll need to be directly referenced more in more than one entity, by more than one entity. So I'll explain more, and if you get lost, stop me. But um, if you create a paragraph, attached to a piece of content. You're not able to directly 
reference that paragraph from another piece of content. You can kind of go around that and reference it via the piece of content, but you can't access the paragraph directly. Um, and that's important to keep in mind, but I think practically it, it doesn't really mean that much. But every time you read something about paragraphs, they say don't use it if you need to access it more than once. Now, I'll show you some issues at the end, uh, Drupal issue. Uh, I guess that's what they are, articles, Drupal issue articles, talking about people who want that to happen. And so that may end up being in the paragraphs module at some point in the future. I don't know. We'll see how that goes. Um, so now what? We're going to talk about three different paragraph types that I kind of just picked out of thin air. Um, there's uh, a lot of different modules out there now that have a lot of, uh, we call them example, I guess example paragraphs and things. So you can find those if you knock around. I'll have some links to some stuff towards the end of the presentation. But these are the ones we're going to deal with. We're going to deal with um, an image with a quote and a citation overlay, which is just going to be a basic landscape looking image uh, with a quote and a citation laid on top of it. Um, a block of text wrapped around an inset, which is you know float left or float right. Um, and it doesn't have to be an image. It could be anything, but we're going to make it an image. Uh, then we're going to look at a multi-column grouping of content teasers, which is a bit of a tongue twister. But uh, it's going to be a paragraph that is referencing teasers of other uh, content type entities. Um, so that's, yeah, that'll be the more complicated one. Um, all right. So first, we have image with quote. And so that's what it looks like. Um, there's not a lot to say about it, really. It's an image, and you have a quote overlay with the citation in the bottom right of it. Can everybody see that okay? Oh, good? All right. Um, here's just a really basic data model. Um, so the demo article is what's con being uh, connected to uh, with these paragraph types. And you can see that it has fields attached to a paragraph. It looks a lot like a um, content type. It has a lot of similarities. Um, and, and, and can be treated as such for some, for some things. Um, it also means that a lot of different, uh, sort of the development with it and writing your own custom code, you can do a lot of the stuff you can just do with a regular content type. Um, so that's the first one we're gonna look at. And um, these are the field definitions. This has looked pretty familiar, though it's probably a little bit small to you guys. Um, let me do this. I'm having trouble seeing what I've got up there. There we go. That's a little bit better. So you'll see that the machine names are kind of namespaced, which there's no reason in particular. I just like to do that on my content types or paragraph types. Um, it helps me. And, and uh, there, there's reasons not to reuse field definitions, I believe, even though you can in Drupal 8. I just recommend not doing it unless you have a really good reason to reuse them. Um, and so, yeah, it really just looks like a regular content type. Um, here is the display modes um, for this image with quote. And I'm using the group, the field groups module to apply classes and HTML elements to the fields. Um, field groups can do a lot of other stuff, and it's sort of beyond our scope. But if you look it up, it's a neat, neat module, does some neat things. Um, but this is what we're going to use it for. Uh, it's pretty, pretty straightforward. Can, that's pretty small. So yeah, there's different regions applied to these in between the fields. They look like kind of like a field element, but what they have is they're an HTML, an HTML element with a class of my choosing applied to them that we're going to use to style these different fields. Um, and I'll talk more about that in a little bit here. Um, and so our next one we're going to look at is an is a inset wrapped with text paradigm type, which is kind of normal, there's some image and there's some float, it's floated and there's some text wrapping around it. Um, you can see where it's fitting in the demo article here. Um, and then down here at the bottom, you can see that there's two in our, um, also there's a image with a quote down there too, but we're gonna get to the multi-paragraph or the multi-column in a second here. So another sort of data model here is very similar attention to is the horizontal alignment field that um, we're going to use um, to style the paragraph uh, at the time of content creation. We'll let the content creator decide whether the, it's going to be float left or float right. Um, 
and I'll show you how we're going to do that. Yeah. Um, so this image field is what we're wrapping around, and you can see it's the sort of the middle one there. I'm afraid the text is a bit small. Um, it could be anything. It, that could be an entity reference to another content type. That could be, I don't know, really anything you can push out through a field. It could be that. Uh, a view would look a little weird, but pretty much anything. Um, and so the horizontal alignment guy, so here's what that would kind of look like um, in the admin form for this paragraph type. So it's just a drop down uh, with a left and a right choosing, and you pick that whenever you're uh, creating the content. You, you pick a picture, you put it in there, and you pick which side you want to be floated to. But you know, for your client or for your content creator, you could really make this a lot easier to understand. I've left defaults on almost everything so that um, it's kind of clear what I'm doing and what I'm not doing. Uh, everybody pretty good so far? Okay. So in contrast to the last paragraph type we looked at, here I didn't use field groups. So we're going to look at one where you use some field groups to put the CSS on and another one where you don't. Um, we're going to assign CSS styles, uh, classes rather, uh, directly in the twig files um, that will come in the styling section here. So, yeah, it's different. You don't have all the little in-between regions there. Um, all right, great. So here's a more uh, complicated paragraph type, which I've called a multi-column layout um, there at the bottom. And, again, we've got data model. This one's a little bit, there's more going on here. Um, <coughs> I wonder. Yes. Laser. No. All right. So we have a paragraph type that's being referred to by an article. And then our multi-column layout is bringing in multiple articles. And our main one that we just looked at has one of these multi-column layout paragraph types. Okay, so that's kind of so good so far. Um, I'll come back to make that make a little more sense. Lots of diagrams. Um, here we're setting up a field to reference a content type entity, a bundle type demo article. So those are our bundle types down here for of content types. And I decided to go ahead and talk about any reference revisions as opposed to entity references. So uh, looking over here, we have underneath reference revisions, normally for making a paragraph reference, we choose paragraph. Um, if you want to make an entity reference revision to a content piece, or rather a, um, a content type, entity type, like article or, you know, whatever content type you want to. You can choose other, and then you choose which uh, entity type it is in the next screen. And then what happens is um, yeah, so uh, normally, if you have an entity reference, you're always going to be pulling in the most recent version of the entity um, and wherever you're displaying it. If you use an entity reference revision, that reference is stuck on the revision it is whenever you you connect those two pieces of content. So if you change it later, you're still pointing at the old content. Well, that may be a really bad idea. It may be a really good idea. It just kind of depends on well, lots of things, really. Uh, but you can do it, and it's kind of neat. Um, generally, uh, and maybe all the time, your paragraphs that are attached to another entity, which could be a paragraph or a content type, um, are always going to be using that entity's ref, uh, reference revision. Does that make sense, or did I just talk a pretzel? pretzel? Any question? Pretzel for me. Pretzel, OK. Um, so are you saying that if you want it to always, the reference to always to point to the latest, mm -hmm. you use the entity reference, and if you yes. want it to point it to a specific revision, you use the entity reference revision? That's correct. OK. And, and this? primarily applies to content types um, because you're not going to be referencing a paragraph uh, directly except as it pertains to the piece that holds it. 
Uh, yeah, I don't know if I said that very well. There's more diagrams. Let's keep going. But I think, yes, what you said is absolutely correct. Um, any reference revision is one revision. Any reference is whatever the latest revision is. Or if there's no revisions, it's just the original piece of content. Um, so there's a module. You can check it out if, if you're requiring paragraphs of dependency or you're using um, Drush install or whatever. Um, it'll bring it in by itself. And do you want a specific revision or the most recent revision? And in some of the queues, there's talk of moving it to core. So it, it's kind of a good concept to get a grasp on, though you won't use it all the time necessarily. Um, so here, here's kind of a visual example that I did. Um, what we have here are two multi-column chunks as part of two different, of the same article actually. Um, but one is using any reference revision and one is using entity reference. Um, so yeah, you, you can use them both. Um, and I said something about the autocomplete widget, but let's, let's not talk about that. I don't, um, that's just going to confuse the matter. So here we are. So notice, so we're, we're kind of moving past that now. We're now talking again about the multi-column layout paragraph type. Um, and so if you'll notice, we're, we're referencing con pieces of content that are content type demo article. Um, and uh, this is, but what we want is we want a different view mode for each of these because we don't want the full article. We just want a little piece because it's going to be in a little square. Um, and so we have a different view mode, and that's how we're going to make that happen. We just want a teaser. Um, so we got another diagram of paragraph type. This demo article is linked up to the teaser multi-column layout view mode, which is a view mode, just a custom view mode that I've created through the UI. Um, and the multi-column layout paragraph type is referencing the demo article that's referenced to that also through a view mode um, of teaser multi-column layout. And then our regular demo article is just looking at this through its default view mode. Uh, here is our demo article with a view display default. Here's a multi-column layout guy down here, which is connected to here through the default view display. Here are the two of the articles. We kind of have ghost ones because I didn't have enough room to do everything. So these are the two um, inset rack with text ones. So there's two different ones. And these are the teaser multi-column chunk view mode of that. And then th these are the paragraph um, teaser multi-column chunk view modes of, of the paragraph parts. OK, so how horrible is that? Is that OK? Uh, all right. Um, I have another slide. It's, it's really hard to represent either in words or in pictures. But you kind of have a, a train of view modes or display modes, depending on which menu you're looking in, down to, uh, to the content that you want. And it's important to kind of string those together. You can name them whatever you want to do. Um, so here I'm showing you the two different ones because these articles we haven't seen yet. So uh, where is it? Right, so this one comes down to this guy over here. And you'll see that it's shorter. Um, there's not as many words. So this is one view mode. This is the default view mode, and this is the teaser multi-column chunk view mode. This one, we're removing this part here, and so that's not there. And then this guy comes in here. The newest revision is another illustration about that's from previously. So context isn't very different, but the presentation is. Um, note that you see there's two paragraphs here, and we have only one paragraph here. I'll show you how we do that. We're going to do that in the twig file. You could do that with like display suite or a bunch of other modules. That's essentially, you know, when you look at a field formatter and you're kind of going, well, I only want the first one. That field can have multiple values. That's what's going on there. Um, we're going to explicitly say what field we want and explicitly which value. So it's going to be, you know, the zero index, but we'll get to that. Um, okay. So here's an overview of the demo content, 
the demo article content type we've been building up. Um, we have the example paragraph types. We have image with quote. Also, it's down here. See this different guy, but same paragraph type. Um, and separate graphic text, and then these guys down there as well. And the multi column chunk is this blue part. Um, I need to get over here. Okay. So, what we're going to do is we're going to break these apart and then. Uh, there's kind of our, our last data diagram. All the previous ones, we've just joined them up here. Um, we have this paragraph type with its fields, this one with its fields. And this is the wonky one where it's doing both. And I could have, it doesn't, you know, we're kind of referring back to the same content type, which is not something you would normally do. That can get really confusing. You can make some very odd inception looking sort of content pieces this way. You can have just a thing that goes forever into the corner. Um, but yeah, the diagrams get really complicated the more stuff you put on them. So we're just using the same sort of content type there. Uh, so let's see. So we're going to look at the demo articles field definitions. So we've talked about the three paragraph types that we're going to talk about. And now we're going to talk about a little bit about the demo article, which is the one that's containing those paragraph types. Um, so we only have one field defined, um, but you could have more. You could it's just you can do whatever you want. But in this case, our demo article is only going to contain paragraph paragraphs in it. It's not going to do anything else. Um, you could even have multiple sort of paragraph references if you wanted to do different groups of paragraphs. If you had say twenty different paragraph types, and you're like, okay, well I want a paragraph from group three, you can select which one do you want? And then we could have another field below this one, which would be demo article super paragraphs. And so then we could, but these are the ones we have defined, so we're selecting all of them. And uh, this is the, whenever you're adding a field, you'll take paragraph from reference revisions. It's the only thing that says paragraph in there, so it's kind of easy to remember. Um, okay, so this is where some of the magic happens. So one reason for using paragraphs is our content creation and edit experience. And when we're looking at the form display options, uh, our edit mode is set to preview, which is a paragraph view mode. Um, and since paragraph is its own, is, is, is a new kind of entity, a new entity type, it has its own view modes. Um, like content types or taxon taxonomy terms also have their own view modes. However, this is the only view mode you can use for this setting. I'm, I'm not really sure why, um, but if you want to use a view mode as a preview of a paragraph type in the admin form, it must be using the, par the preview view mode. Um, there may be, a, yeah, I mean, you could probably change that in the back end somewhere, hacking it up, but that's the way it comes out of the box. Um, if you make any other custom view modes, they're not available. Uh, you can use the form display mode down here. Uh, so you, in Drupal 8, you may have seen that there are form displays and you can create new form displays and then it's a little weird because you're like, well, what do I do with them? This is a place where you could use them. You know, it's pretty much all third party modules are the only things that use extra view modes or sorry, extra form modes. Um, it's hard to explain how that works without you just playing with it. I mean, it gets really kind of weird. Um, the first time you go through this menu, try all the things and see what it does would be my, my best advice. Um, Cause it, it's not, a, I mean, edit mode is kind of a confusing phrase and form display mode is also kind of, don't, aren't those the same thing? And they're not. Um, so, okay. Using the preview, oh, okay, yeah. So here we're using the preview edit mode along with the admin theme styling that we're gonna talk about in a little while. So when configuring the display modes of the paragraphs, I have configured the preview and the default display modes identically in the user interface. So I want them to look the same. So these are 
the way these paragraphs will feel by, appear by default. And when I'm editing them over here, I also want them to do the same thing. Um, and we'll get back to that in a few slides here. All right, so now we're to the styling part. It's kind of a good break if anybody wants me to go back and review any of that or speak slower or anything like that. How's everybody feeling? Good. Good? Okay. So it's switching gears, and we're going to look at the theming side. So first, we're going to look at a few ways to add classes to the paragraph types and fields within those paragraphs. And then we're going to look at the twig templates and how to make them into components which is kind of ambitious, and I'm going to skip a bunch of steps. So this is why you should stop if there's something as a jump and you don't know what's going on. Um, couldn't, yeah, I don't have everything. Um, so you can apply CSS classes to the user interface if you so desire, as we saw earlier. This is especially useful if your only change to your field templates is to add a CSS class or a wrapper. If that's the only thing you're changing, that's what you should do, maybe. This might be simpler. Uh, but it might not. It, it really kind of depends on who's working on what and what your workflow is um, because you really are moving some theme things on this side and, and is that a good idea? I mean, I don't know. Um, it's, it's possible and it works really nice, but I don't know if you should. Uh, so if you want to add classes to a Twig template, uh, there are a lot of ways to do it. Um, if you're inheriting, where's my little dot? Well, that works fine. If you're um, inheriting a Twig template that's already defined, you just want to add a class, this is a pretty decent way to do it. Um, you can just alter one of the pre-processed provided variables in the Twig template, um, which is what we did here. So here's from earlier the slide we looked at, and I just wanted to bring it back up. Um, here we have our field, uh, our field groups, and our CSS classes are in here. Even though they're too small for you to see, and each one's adding an HTML element and a CSS class for styling. So the regions here are your field groups. Yes, okay. I I named they them arbitrarily. One, one they they can be one. named anything, um, and. There's maybe even a better way to do this. I was just like, okay, I'll just throw a wrapper around them with a, with a class on it. Um, there's probably more efficient uh, ways to use field groups, but it works and it looks okay. Um, it, you know, it doesn't add that much HTML. Uh, and really, I don't want to do it this way anyway. I'm just kind of showing you all a way to do it. Um, I want to do them in the, tw in the Twig files. Uh, Maybe that's, I don't know. I don't know if that's best practice or just my personal choice. We can discuss that if you want. Um, okay. So now, first of all, we're going to talk about the main theme, which is just a simple demo theme extended from Bartik. And um, if, if you've extended any of the themes like Bartik, um, and never mind. And I'll talk about that a little bit in the admin part. So. Normally you have, so for components. So we're gonna start out with components, which is a little bit weird, but we're gonna do this from the idea of using components from the outset. Um, and I'm going to mention on and off things like Pattern Lab or KCS Node, but we're not going to use that. We're gonna do this in a homegrown way as if we couldn't use those. Um, mostly to drive home the principle behind it uh, because I've, you know, you start looking at molecules and atoms and some, Sometimes you kind of glazed over. We talked about that last week, and now this is sort of the in-between not using components and full-on using something like that. So normally all of your Twig templates have to reside in the uh, templates folder of your theme. So why do we want to move them out of there? Well, um, likely if we want to reuse those components in multiple sites, uh, not at the same time, not talking about a multi-site usage, but if we want to write a component once, be able to use it multiple times, or if we want to use them multiple ways in our own site uh, with something like Pattern Lab or whatever, where you're going to use a component more than once, you really want to get them out of your templates directory. Um, technically, you can leave them in there; doesn't really do anything. But you want to make sure that none of the file names will get picked up from Drupal, quote unquote, accidentally. Uh, we want to be very deliberate about when we're using our component files. 
Um, so by moving them out of that directory, we ensure we're not going to use them on accident. They're not going to get used unless we point to them directly. So we have, yeah, some magic directories. So some directories are magical and, and some are not. Uh, the names sometimes they matter. And there's actually more magic ones. You know, that, that's a magic one. That's magic. That's magic. That one isn't. Um, that one kind of is. So anyway, um, notice that this, this directory name does not matter. It could be called elephants. But they're components. So I named it components. Um, your config, I have config in there and then your templates one so that templates can actually it can be moved around a bit but yeah 